This is Tom from Tom's Epic Gaming, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the deck that I almost ran at Worlds this year, my mid-range good deck, Priest of Gold Dragon. As you can see on the side of the screen, it runs 42 good, 3 evil, 9 sage, and 6 wild. As the name implies, one of the absolute strongest combinations in this deck is Gold Dragon followed by Priest of Kalinor. You play these two in that order, you get a 1-4 body, gain 4 health, and then you have a 6-8 airborne, righteous, blitz, unbreakable, untargetable champion coming in. And since it has all of those abilities, it's incredibly hard to remove, so it's probably going to hit and deal 6 damage. So you gain 6 health, probably dealt 6 damage to your opponent, and you end your turn with a 1-4 righteous and a 6-8 airborne righteous in play. Incredibly powerful stuff. I basically discovered this while testing decks in the Epic Digital Alpha, where I was looking for alternate ways to combat the evil, the wild decks, excuse me, that basically have a lot of burn in them. And then this basically just shuts them out because it gains you more health than they can ever possibly come back from before you kill them. So in order to make this into more of a solid deck, I wanted to include other ways to benefit from my gold dragon since it gives all of my good champions righteous. So that's where these ambush champions come in. Basically, I can if I can play any of these on my opponent's turn when their gold is down, I can start with them in play, play my gold dragon, and then have multiple righteous champions that can do work. The best one for this specifically is my Master Zo, because if that starts my turn in play, I do my gold dragon priest of Kalnor play, I attack with Master Zo, and now I have a 9-8 unbreakable righteous, and then my crazy gold dragon, and assuming both of them hit and deal damage, I gain 19 health for the turn, and my board is looking sick. They basically need a Wave of Transformation, Martial Law, Inheritance of the Meek, or Surprise Attack, Time Walker, or Reset to deal with it, and most of the decks aren't actually running those. It gets around Zombie Apocalypse, which is being run, and other similar things like possibly Hurricane. Amazingly powerful stuff. Angel of Light is an Ambush Airborne Champion, so it can start attacking in the air, which is really nice, and gains me enough health to potentially survive to get through the damage I need to to win. Noble Unicorn has always been a solid card in good. It draws a card immediately, and then every card, every good one-cost card draws you another card and can get absolutely out of hand, so your opponent has to deal with it, and it also works with the Righteous. Making those cards even stronger, though, are my combat tricks Brave Squire and Force Lance. Basically, they can simulate the Master Zoe effect, or I attack with my crazy Priest of, Ga uh, Priest of Kalnor Gold Dragon and a Brave Squire Noble Unicorn. Just incredibly powerful. Uh, the Unbreakable effect against all the evil is very strong, and it's only really weak to uh, Erase and Hasty Retreat, which are very popular right now. And... But aside from that, you don't always have your Priest of Kalnor, and it just provides some nice redundancy. In addition, with all these unbreakable effects, we have two of Plague, so instead of playing my Gold Dragon on my turn, I can make my guys unbreakable, then break all champions to clear your board, and then attack with my big guys, possibly with Righteous if our Gold Dragon survived from the previous turn. Really powerful. Deadly Raid works similarly, where if I have two champions in play, and I can make them both unbreakable, and then give them unblockable, you better hope you have one of those cards I mentioned before, like Wave of Transformation, or you're probably dead. Or at least low enough that I can kill you at some point in the future, fairly easily. The next part of the deck is basically to answer one of the crippling weaknesses of good mid-range decks that have existed since, basically, Origins 2016, when I lost to Hampus, is my anti-Thought Plucker, anti-Muse package. One of the absolute most important cards in this to basically counter Thought Plucker is my Marcus Watch Captain. Because basically, they play their Thought Plucker, I get a free 10-10 body that draws its card back up, and without spending my gold, I have a massive threat that my opponent has to deal with, and if they deal with it, I have a gold that I can spend to punish them. Huge card, flips the matchup, makes it so it's a lot better for me. Ancient Chant is also strong against Thought Plucker because it can just keep you in cards. Wither's nice, but the next most powerful card that I absolutely adore is Cast Out. Not only does it have the absolute best art by far in the set, 
because it's a good card that's showing someone banishing Muse, and that someone looks pretty, pretty sick. But it's able to banish Muse, banish Thought Plucker, give me two humans, which also works with like my Master Zoe or Marcus to banish bigger things, and it's fast. So not only do I remove your Thought Plucker, but I prevent you from final tasking it. Incredibly strong card. Another important aspect of Cast Out that gets frequently overlooked is that it's only the second good zero with an or draw two effect. The only other one in the game so far is Revolt. So if you're looking for zeros that can draw two, Cast Out is where you're going to look, essentially. From there, I basically included more strong cards to fill out the deck. So we've got three Palace Garb, strong, play the 6-8 champion in play, that's good, and banish something, just overall solid card, and brand as well, similarly, really strong, an ambush body, body that can block something is pretty decent by itself, the 5 health is very real, and the plus 3 offense, whether it uses on itself to kill a demon, when you ambush it in, or to put it on one of my champions to give it that extra combat it needs to kill something during combat, is incredibly strong. Especially if I have like a gold dragon in play, I play this, that's three more damage to them, three more health to me. Overall, I've been fairly impressed with Brand. The next set of cards that I included basically just help all of my champions get damage through without spending my gold. So we've got two of Lash, so if I have anything like my Palace Guard or my Marcus or my Master Zoe, I get to Lash them to get damage through Defenders. And Faithful Pegasus is also great for those, because it lets them get into the air, so there's incredibly uh, difficult ways to chump block him from that point. These two cards just work very nicely for getting damage through. The next card that's amazing at getting damage through, and it's one of the strongest cards in the deck, is Silverwing Lancer. This card is bonkers. Uh, my Pluck You team ran this card in our deck with combat tricks, and it was fairly good there, although it had its weaknesses. But in this deck, it's insane, particularly with Priest of Kalinor. If I Silverwing Lancer and Priest of Kalinor it, I essentially have a 10-8, unbreakable, untargetable, unbanishable, unblockable champion. It's going to come and hit you for 10, and then it's going to stay around. If you're relying on banished effects to get rid of it, it's unbanishable permanently, so you're going to have to find another way to deal with it. Super powerful card, it's where a lot of this deck's damage comes from, and basically it's one of the Pantheon cards that really just pushed this deck to the next level. Another card that's nice from Pantheon is Flames of Furios. Granted, it's largely included as the one-cost things that let me run my two of Lash, but it can be very strong, particularly against Demon decks, because it can kill all of their champions off turn, even the Rift Summoner that comes with it, deal them some damage, and a decent number of my champions survive it, namely Palace Guard, Marcus, Master Zoe, and Gold Dragon. Off turn one sided board clears are incredibly powerful, and unlike Draka's Fire, as a draw two, so when I don't need it to clear off my opponent's champions, it can always just draw me other cards. Also, interesting to note is it does deal with Strafing Dragon, uh, Draka's Enforcer, Herald of Lashnock. And it's overall a very surprisingly strong card. That being said, aside from the Gold Dragon Priest of Kalamor card play, the strongest card in the deck by far is Silverwing Savior. This card is an absolute beast. When I saw it revealed at Origins this last year, I was like, oh my god, this is everything I need for my good mid-range decks and more. If you ignore the tribute ability, a good champion that's 7-7 seven, seven airborne blitz. If you play this when your opponent's gold is down, you're probably hitting them for 7, and at that 7 defense, you need to spend a 1 cost card to deal with it, aside from vanishing or hasty retreat. So that by itself is incredibly strong. When you add that tribute effect, just goes, goes to 11 essentially. Basically you can play this, get back your Priest of Kalnor, immediately Priest of Kalnor, gain 4 health, attack with a 7-7 Airborne Blitz Untargetable Unbreakable Champion. Really strong. Need an off turn play, get back your Master Zoe, get back your Noble Unicorn, your Angel of Light, any of those to re-establish in case they clear your board, or if you just need cards, you can get back your Cast Out, or the Resurrection which I'll talk about soon, 
as just another off turn draw two. That's in good. And that's really strong. There's also just Brave Squire if you need more break unbreakable effects. Faithful Pegasus if you need to get a Master Zoe in the air. Gold Dragon if you just need more, basically, threats to deal with. Uh, the damage from Wild, Palace Guard, etc, etc, etc. Insanely strong card. I would not play this deck without it. It brings it to a whole new level. The other most interesting interaction with Silverwing Savior, though, is the Resurrection I mentioned earlier. If you have Silverwing Savior in play, which you'll usually play when your opponent's gold is down, unless you're making it unbreakable, if your opponent tries to break it while your gold is up, and you have Resurrection in hand, they break it, you resurrect it, Resurrection fully resolves, gets back your Silverwing Savior, and then the Silverwing Savior Tribute ability resolves, so you can get back your Resurrection. So essentially, they broke your Silverwing Savior, at a net loss of zero cards in hand, you have a 7-7 Airborne Blitz in play again. Insane. And since your Resurrection is never vulnerable to removal, as long as they don't remove your Silverwing Savior from your discard pile, you can just keep doing this, keep that 7-7 Airborne Blitzer out, and just punish those control decks for trying to remove your stuff, thinking you won't be able to punish them with Blitz, and you never lose cards in your hand with this combination. Incredibly powerful. What's also really great is resurrecting your Silverwing Savior, getting back on Marcus Watch Captain against the Pluck Plucker deck, and then you're attacking for 7, and you have that backup in case they ever draw their next Plucker. So strong. I absolutely love this card. I love this combination. And it really just brings the deck entirely together. It does so much work. That's basically the overview of this deck. Why it's strong. What it does differently. And why I love it. If I've intrigued you, you can go on to my next video. Where I talk about how it plays in different matchups. Primarily against Wild Aggression and Evil Control. Because as a mid-range deck, it plays incredibly differently against both of them. Your entire strategy changes, and against any deck you're up against, you have to be able to adapt to what your opponent's doing, and be able to realize how you can attack their small weaknesses. In addition, I'll talk about the evolution of this deck, and then go from there. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.